I want to start off with Craig, who continues to track Dorian's path. Really interesting developments through the overnight. We're going to take a look here. You're going to notice the satellite images, the infrared showing it looks like the eye is collapsing. That's taking a look at all the cloud covers, assigning different colors uh, to the different temperatures that this uh, satellite is perceiving here as it senses and, and continues to look at the atmosphere over Dorian. I want to show you, though, the radar. You're going to see that this thing still has a pretty good eye to it, although the Western sides become a little more fragmented at six o'clock. We still have 120 mile per hour winds, so this is the brand new update still stationary, and unfortunately that means more trouble for Grand Bahama Island. You can see that uh, southern part of the eye right across the island right now. Now I mentioned the western side of this a little more fragmented. We're not seeing the deep convection that we saw earlier, and again from the infrared satellite, it looks like the eye is collapsing, but you still see that broad circulation at the surface, so it is still a very healthy hurricane category three as I mentioned 120 mile per hour winds gusting to 150. It is turning to the north that anticipated turn taking place later as we go through the overnight and early Wednesday. I think it's going to be nearly stationary for a while yet today but later this evening it starts to move to the northwest and then it should turn to the north keeping the center offshore from Florida and then making a run up along the Carolina coast tropical storm force winds certainly across the region potentially some hurricane force gusts. We'll have to wait and see how things go, but there is that potential as we go Thursday into early Friday, especially down into North Carolina. Few showers off to the north. Highs today around 84 degrees. It'll be mostly to partly sunny. Not a bad day for the first day of school. I'll have more on that in a bit. Right now, though, we're going to check in with Megan Shin. She's down at the Outer Banks and folks down there getting ready for Dorian. Yeah, Craig, and as you mentioned, the big concern over here is the potential for storm surge, rain, and heavy winds over here. And yesterday we showed you some of the damage and the diminishment to those dunes that protect Highway 12, a big entrance and exit for the Outer Banks overall. And so that's why the officials for Hyde and Dare counties issued mandatory evacuations. So visitors here in Dare County are asked to leave by noon today, and that also extends to tomorrow, and that includes residents leaving by 6 a.m. tomorrow. In Hyde County, visitors need to leave Ocracoke Island starting at 5 this morning. That's already in effect, so start packing your bags. And if you live if you live over there, you have until 5 tomorrow morning to leave. Yesterday, we spoke with locals and visitors about the evacuation orders. If we have to leave, we'll leave. Some of the locals are kind of like, no, I'm staying here. Like, I'm not leaving. Like, I live here. And the tricky part about leaving Ocracoke Island is, of course, you need to take a ferry. So in the studio, we have Dana Smith keeping an eye on that. Dana, when does the last ferry leave? All right, thank you so much, Megan. I do have those final departure times for you. So you want to take a look at your screen and remember these times because these are the final ferries leaving from Ocracoke Island. So the ferry to Cedar Island that's leaving September 4th, that is tomorrow at 1 p.m. is the last one. The ferry to Hatteras again leaving tomorrow, September 4th at 2 p.m. Now the ferry to Swan Quarter again tomorrow at 3.45 p.m. Take a good look at these times and remember them because these are the final departure from Ocracoke, 1 p.m. to Cedar Island, 2 p.m. to Hatteras, and 3.45 p.m. to Swan Quarter. And officials are recommending that you pack up your personal belongings as much as you can, but don't take everything, and you want to leave as soon as possible because there is going to be a lot of traffic out there on the roadways. Dan Ashley. Okay, Dana, thank you. Well, because of the mandatory evacuations in North Carolina, Dare County Schools will not have school Wednesday through Friday, tomorrow through Friday. Now, that applies for all students and staff. Today is the first day back to school for many Virginia students, so we'll be sure to let you know if any more cancellations or delays come in this week. Now, the Outer Banks SPCA needs foster families. With Hurricane Dorian on the way, they want to clear the shelter. That will make room for any pets that may become homeless because of Dorian. So if you foster an animal, you can bring it back after the storm. Emergency management teams in Norfolk are keeping a close eye on Dorian. At Old Dominion University, the school's Office of Emergency Management works with the National Weather Service and the state and city emergency management to help keep you informed. ODU and the city of Norfolk are both cleaning out ditches and storm pipes and other problem areas. 
And a warning this morning from Naval Station Norfolk in response to Hurricane Dorian. They say do not leave your car on base. If you have to, the best spot is as far away from the waterfront as possible. The Naval Public Works Department will run a shuttle from the next movie theater at 7 this morning. Well, now to a declaration of emergency that's been issued for the city of Jacksonville Beach and a mandatory evacuation. Our team coverage continues in Florida where people continue to prepare for the hurricane. I'm Lewis Turner here in Jacksonville Beach. This is First Street. First Street means we're a block off the ocean. Some businesses have uh, not boarded up. Others have uh, learning lessons from Hurricane Matthew, which did a eerily similar track that Dorian is forecast to do right now. Every mile is going to matter to where that eye wall uh, shifts, pivots, however you want to put it. A lot of people have been saying the wobble. I've heard of just about enough of wobbling. Uh, but nonetheless, even with a moderate storm surge and a higher than normal tide, we could see water at least an inch or two deep and that's the best case scenario here on first street in jacksonville beach well, happening now in south carolina mandatory evacuations because of hurricane dorian so state police opened the other side of interstate 26 to conduct a lane reversal however that doesn't mean you can get into the other lane whenever you want drivers were caught on camera crossing over the median that is illegal and dangerous. 